take a deep breath, hold it, and let it out. Breathing is the natural process of taking in oxygen and expelling carbon dioxide. Oxygen and carbon dioxide are exchanged inside the lungs, but the lungs themselves do not actively take air in or force air out. Inhalation and exhalation are accomplished by the diaphragm and the muscles surrounding the thoracic cavity, as we will see in this lab demonstration. To understand how air moves into and out of the lungs, we need to understand two natural laws regarding gases such as air. Although we cannot see air, we know that air has mass and takes up space, like all matter in the universe. The scientific term for the amount of space something takes up is volume. Molecules of air are in constant motion. These molecules collide with one another and with the sides of their container, creating a force called pressure. A simplified version of one natural law states that a decrease in the volume of a gas produces a proportional increase in the pressure of the gas. This principle, known as Boyle's Law, is named for Robert Boyle, the scientist who first made this discovery in the 1660s. In this illustration, the volume of the gas is being decreased by the plunger. As the volume of the gas decreases, the molecules bump into each other more often, which causes the pressure of the gas to increase. Likewise, if we increase the volume of the gas, the pressure of the gas decreases. We will conduct an experiment to demonstrate how the volume of air is affected by a change in air pressure. For the experiment, we need a large syringe and a small balloon. We have already put some air into the balloon and tied off the end. The air inside the balloon is taking up a specific volume. We place the balloon into the barrel of a syringe and insert the plunger. The air pressure inside the barrel of the syringe and the air pressure inside the balloon are balanced, so the balloon size does not increase or decrease. We must close off the end of the syringe to prevent air from entering or escaping from the barrel. When we pull back on the plunger, we increase the volume of air inside the barrel. As we increase the volume of air inside the barrel, the air pressure outside the balloon decreases. Notice what happens to the balloon. Because the air pressure inside the balloon is greater than the air pressure outside the balloon, the balloon expands. What happens to the balloon when we allow the plunger to return to its original position? When the volume of the air and the air pressure inside the barrel return to normal, the balloon also returns to its original size. If we depress the plunger past its original position, the volume of the air inside the barrel decreases and the air pressure around the balloon increases. Since the pressure of the air outside the balloon is now greater than the pressure of the air inside the balloon, the balloon compresses and shrinks in size. Now, let's discuss another natural law. We have seen how air exerts pressure because air molecules move around and collide with one another. If a region with higher air pressure is connected to a region of lower air pressure, Molecules of air will move from the region of higher air pressure to the region of lower air pressure. This is an example of the second law of thermodynamics. Thermodynamics deals with energy and the movement of molecules. If we inflate a balloon, the air pressure inside the balloon is greater than the air pressure outside the balloon. The air inside the balloon represents a region of higher air pressure and the air outside the balloon represents a region of lower air pressure. What do you think will happen to the air inside the balloon if we open the end? The air from a region of higher air pressure inside the balloon moves to a region of lower air pressure outside the balloon. How do these natural laws relate to our lungs and the processes of inhalation and exhalation? The thoracic cavity where the lungs are located occupies a certain volume. In the process of inhalation, several sets of muscles work together to expand the volume of the thoracic cavity. 
A large muscle called the diaphragm separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. When the diaphragm moves downward, the thoracic cavity expands and the volume inside the thoracic cavity increases. At the same time, muscles in the chest and back expand the width of the thoracic cavity, which further increases its volume. When the volume of the thoracic cavity increases, the volume of air inside the lungs also increases. This increase in the volume of air creates a region of lower air pressure inside the lungs. Since air moves from a region of higher air pressure to a region of lower air pressure, air rushes in through the mouth and nostrils to fill the lungs. This is inhalation. When the air pressure inside the lungs is the same as the air pressure outside the lungs, inhalation stops and exhalation begins. When the diaphragm relaxes, it decreases the volume of the thoracic cavity, which decreases the volume of air inside the lungs. This decrease in the volume of air creates a region of higher air pressure inside the lungs. Because air moves from a region of higher air pressure to a region of lower air pressure, air rushes out of the lungs. This is exhalation. This lung demonstration kit shows the actions of inhalation and exhalation. These two balloons represent the lungs. The plastic tube represents the trachea and the bronchial tubes, which are also called bronchi. This flexible disc at the bottom of the kit represents the diaphragm. The container represents the thoracic cavity, but unlike your thoracic cavity, the sides of the container cannot expand and contract. First, we will demonstrate the process of inhalation. When we pull down on the flexible disc, the volume of the container increases, which increases the volume of air inside the balloons. The increase in the volume of air inside the balloons produces a region of lower air pressure inside the balloons. Since air moves from a region of higher air pressure, to a region of lower air pressure, air moves into the balloons and the balloons inflate. Now, we will demonstrate the process of exhalation. When we release the flexible disc, the volume of the container decreases, which decreases the volume of air inside the balloons. The decrease in the volume of air inside the balloons produces a region of higher air pressure inside the balloons. Because air moves from a region of higher air pressure, to a region of lower air pressure, air moves out of the balloons and the balloons deflate. This model provides us with a simplified demonstration of what happens when we inhale and exhale. We hope you can breathe easier knowing more about how your respiratory system works. In our next two labs, we will discuss the process of digestion. At this time, proceed with the corresponding activities.